Hello everyone, before I begin on behalf of our company, I wanted to thank everyone watching this recording for your time and interest in our company despite the hard times we face today. Uh, with this, I will start my three minute investment pitch uh, recording for your review. My name is Dave Lee from Avivai. We're Singapore's first EV company concentrating on commercial sector. Unlike other EV companies you've heard of or read about, we are an auto, we are an OEM automaker with products available today, not three years from now, concentrated I am focused on providing solutions to three major issues that commercial EV sector face today. Total cost of ownership, range anxiety, and availability. Our unique business model allows us to have a solution in all these three sectors. Currently, we are contracted with Photon, manu Photon for manufacturing, um, DuraPower for battery supply, and exclusive rights with GEM technology allowing us to get minimum 30 more percent per range. Here's a capture of what the current situation looks like. Current existing ICE competitors are selling at 100,000 to 82,000 per vehicle. Our Iona v VS using Toyota Heist chassis comes in at 84,000 with 350 kilometers per range. Now let's look at the three major issues. Total cost of ownership, we blew that by 15%. We're good. Range anxiety, 350 kilometers, more than enough by any standards for uh, commercial fleet. Availability, working with photons, we're able to produce enough quantities to be able to meet the Singapore demand. Let's look at that. In Singapore, about 110 vehicles are bought out every year. Out of that, 58,000 are vans. That breaks it down to about 5,000 new vans on a monthly basis. Our projections are looking doing 500 units this year. That's correct, 500. Next year, 1,500. Following, 2,500. And you can see the gross profit that is generating. Um, what we're looking for today to make this into a reality is 5 million US dollars for 10% of our company equity. And here's the proceed, um, use of proceeds for that money. And with your collaboration and investment, these are potential clients globally and in Singapore that are waiting patiently to drive and purchase our Avivai uh, vehicles today. Um, here's an exit strategy available uh, against your investment. And if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to contact us and look very forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sabit Johan, founder of Blitz, and we are a micro-mobility company based out of Indonesia that offers stationless electric vehicles. Quick background on the team, I'm a mechanical engineer specializing in design, and prior to my own company, I worked on Elon Musk's Hyperloop startup. Along with me is Sanjay and our other colleagues with backgrounds in shipping, PR, finance, IT, and ops. More about the company. Our goal is to make EVs more accessible globally at a much lower cost than simply outright selling them. And we're achieving this goal by offering the EVs through our stationless rental parking model that allows a user to pick up and drop off um, the vehicles anywhere they want, thus giving them this unmatched transportation convenience. We've developed our own IP and tech in terms of battery design, vehicle design, and the software itself. And as you can see, we're doing pilot projects for Bali and also expanding to Canada with the help of their government and universities to build our R&D center over there. So what's new? There are many companies in the West offering electric kick scooters, but the biggest enemy in this business is in competition, it's weather, terrain, vehicle durability, and the safety of the users. That's why for the last year and a half, we've developed our hardware to withstand all terrain and weather, uh, among other improvements to ensure rider safety, uh, as well as vehicle durability, so that these vehicles can be operational 24-7. Now in the interest of time, I'm going to skim through these slides, so I implore you to pause the video to check them out in your own time. But these improvements include improving vehicle design, doing thousands of tests to ensure the same benchmark across all our products and standards, uh, implementing sensors and cameras to prevent fire, detect moisture, detect uh, electrical short circuits, improving the battery tech across the board, having a universal battery design for all the vehicles, pushing for swappable battery stations in the future, also optimizing the software, with emphasis on adaptive AI for distribution of the vehicles throughout the cities, plus those early warning assistance sensors. Uh, and we're going beyond transport as well. We've already started pursuing that through fintech implementation, pushing for public transportation, as well as other services like deliveries. And as you can see, uh, compared to our competition, uh, we have quite a bit of a leg up. We're doing things that they're either not doing or partially doing and going well beyond that as well. The market at the moment is huge, as you can see, and is expected to continue growing as electric becomes the norm. Our launch strategy includes Indonesia, of course. We're doing pilot projects here. Uh, we're expanding to Canada soon and already discussing Australia. We have many exclusive corporate partners in Indonesia. We have hotel partners for Bali. We also have partners in Canada that are helping us build the R&D facility, primarily these two big universities. Uh, there's the stationless business model that I mentioned earlier. 
uh, but we're also implementing the store-to-store -store deliveries and finally we're also rolling out a monthly subscription as well so where we are today we've raised our seed round funding and through that we were able to validate the market uh, do small-scale pilot projects develop our prototypes develop the software itself and also uh, commence our exclusive partnerships in Canada and Bali. So now we're seeking further funding to manufacture more vehicles in mass quantities so that we can actually do more wider scale launches. And that's really it. Thank you so much for listening. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the founder and CEO of Kamo Automotive and together we drive safer. So let's start with our mission statement is to provide data as a service to our B2B customers this includes fleet operators, auto OEMs, and independent workshops. And our vision is to provide data as an empowerment for the business transformations to over 100 million car owners here in Southeast Asia. So a little bit about us, we started in 2015. We have four staff strength right now, and we were invested by Tri Ventures in 2016. Sales last year was close to $20,000. So we provide data as a service to consumer markets, as well as corporate fleet owners. So right now we are working with SMRT bus, one of the largest bus operators here in Singapore. What we do is we deploy our units into each bus, data will be collected, pushed to the cloud, we will perform analytics and mining, real-time notification of an error will be detected and we inform the bus operator who will then stop the bus from breaking down the middle of the road. So our strength is really into remote real-time monitoring, generating insights from raw data and integrating our data to the bus platform to help them achieve preventive maintenance. So how impactful is our data is very. So right now we are targeting to save $5,000 per year per bus. And the intangible impact will be to help them to lower down their vehicle breakdowns, keep the efficiency of the fleet high, and even using the data for driving behavior. So MSMRT is one of the largest operators of bus services in Singapore. They're currently only using GPS and that couldn't help them to achieve predictive maintenance to prevent vehicles from breaking down. With commerce data, now they're able to do so. Another key client of ours is ExxonMobil. We are right now working with them via the exclusive distribution agreement for Singapore and Thailand market. The contract is worth three to five million dollars for each location. And now, right now they're deploying 6,500 units of our dongles here in Singapore as we speak. So real, remote real-time monitoring, what it really means is we gather a lot of information of our vehicle stats of each individual vehicle. We know the efficiency, we know how high the temperature of the vehicle are. We even know exactly when is the battery is going to fail so that it prevents you from breaking down. In terms of deployment this year, we're hitting about close to 300,000 units. All right. And um, for 2021, will be 3.5 million units. The sales will be close to uh, $300,000 as well as uh, uh, 3.5 million as I mentioned just now. So the roadmap will be taking the same data that we collected and working on the data to achieve different business models, different uh, sales pipe that we are able to go back to the end user to use it. So that increases our monetization. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Hi, I'm Neil Mehta, co-founder of Show Reserve. When you have to get to important meetings or events and you want to get there on time, there's no guarantee that you'd be able to find parking immediately when you arrive. Now the parking management may put a cone or a sign with your name on it. And some places have valet service. However, there's no consistent or unified service available in the market today. And that is where we bring in Show Reserve, a premium pre-booking service that allows you to reserve a parking spot at your end destination and go in and park without the hassle of having to search for parking when you get there. And malls and buildings are able to now offer a value added service to their customers very easily and at no additional cost. In fact, they make additional revenue from every booking made. And drivers are able to avail a premium experience across multiple locations in the city as the service scales. This is a simple solution. It comprises a parking booking app a barrier to block out a parking space and a car park management platform. The app has a simple and easy to use interface. You can select the car park, book a spot and pay the booking fee through the app. And when you reach the car park, it will guide you to the exact spot where you click the unlock button. 
At that point, the park lot at the parking lot will recline flat onto the ground so you can drive in and park. And the spots are located close to the lobby or entrance of the building, facilitating easy entry and exit. This is our car park management dashboard. Now, as against Valet, our only real competition, we have a service that uses less manpower and is more scalable and hence profitable. And we intend to capitalize on this advantage and being the first mover in the region, launch and rapidly scale across Singapore and onwards to other cities. We intend to launch early Q3 across a few select car parks in busy areas with high car traffic. And the launch will be accompanied by marketing efforts comprising social media, advertising, and co-marketing with malls. And what surprised us about Singapore is that despite being a small market, it actually presents a large potential opportunity in revenue terms. Our business model is very simple. The driver pays a booking fee and we share 30% of it with the car park management. In order to cover our operational costs for 12 to 14 months post our launch, we are looking to raise USD 1 million. Here's a picture of our park lot being tested out in the car parks. And we're two co-founders having been in the parking industry for a combined 15 years. Uh, and we've both been in sales and engineering roles prior to that. Now we hope our business is of interest to you and thank you. And looking forward to having a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Hello, my name is James, and I'm here to talk to you about Ion Mobility, the Tesla of EV motorcycle mobility in Southeast Asia. Uh, I co-founded this company in October 2019 between Joel and myself, and we are now in the market to raise money. So far, we have raised 1.3 US million out of a 2 million range. This is the, mobile, the Model 1, our prototype, that we have finished in 10 months. It is available for test riding in Singapore and in Jakarta. The Model 1 is what we're launching uh, in Indonesia later this year, and it will have equivalent uh, performance specifications to the Model 0, but with a new industrial design. The overall specifications are shown in this slide. The aim is to go after the 125 to the 155 cc motorcycle segment and to ensure that our price and our performance matches the gasoline ice internal combustion engine equivalents in this space. The, the motorcycle will have uh, smart features that allow us to have an innovative business model and uh, the charging would be on from any wall charger uh, where charging would take three hours to go from zero to 100% charge for a real world use kit range of about 160 kilometers. So far uh, we have uh, gotten a lot of the pieces locked down, in-country partners for post-sales servicing for dealership, as well as our product uh, partner, product su our supply chain and our contract manufacturer partner in China. There's a lot of work ahead of us, but we have a clear plan on what we need to do, which is largely unaffected by the COVID incident. Uh, overall, we are still in design phase for Model 1, and we do not expect to be in the supply chain procuring parts until uh, second half of this year, probably around August to October period. As a result, we do not think that the COVID situation would uh, affect us too much. We have a good team, the best in this region. Uh, the experience between myself, Joel, CNE, and our Chief Eagle Officer, which we can name to you on the call, uh, is more than sufficient. Uh, more than worth its weight in gold. We have very good team members like Gautam who have XF1 experience as well. This is not just a hardware team, even though it seems to be a hardware business. This is a software and a hardware business combined. Why are we doing this? Uh, I, the population of motorcycles in Indonesia is really big, uh, but the air quality is really poor and the gasoline efficiency in terms of pollution is really poor as well. Uh, we think there's a large there's conducive uh, regulatory environment, and there is a lot of things we could do to innovate on the 6.5 million new sold every year motorcycles and to grow that pie for the EV um, part of its market share. 6.5, as I said, sold this uh, every year, and we're going after the premium mass market. Uh, after Indonesia will be Vietnam. Uh, this is the indicative price range that we are pricing at uh, a subscribe to own single fee of 115 US. 
uh, which is at the low end of uh, 155 and competitive against the 125 bonus cycle. Uh, we are head over heels against our competitors and uh, we have all these core pieces that we will be going after as part of our in-country localization and go-to-market strategy. Uh, we will not do Singapore until the charging and the connector standards are clarified for motorcycles. And these are financials that we have to go over with you on a one-on-one -on -one call. We see ourselves as a go, -go role of Southeast Asia, uh, building motorcycles that are friendly to the Indonesia and Vietnamese uh, consumer palette. This is our scenes of our China supply chain production partner. And this is the fundraising details. We can talk more about that when we talk one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm the founder of Surya. Surya is focused on the ride sharing segment in the developing world. Today it's catered to by the unorganized sector, but there's a very big opportunity because of the booming urban centers, because of the growing middle class and uh, the ined inadequate public transportation that is most common in the developing world. So that's a huge opportunity. So we intend to produce a purpose-built vehicle for ride sharing that would make it affordable, comfortable, and eco-friendly. So our vehicle is a very modular designed vehicle that caters to the need of the operator. It's a uh, tech-enabled vehicle, so it's a plug-and-play vehicle. It's a very profitable vehicle for a driver owner. It has very low cost of ownership. And um, it's also very uh, convenient for commuters because it's going to be comfortable and uh, safe to ride in. Uh, Surya is building a low voltage, low speed electric vehicle, and it is purpose built uh, for uh, ride sharing. The fleet segment requires zero downtime for charging, so we have swappable batteries that would uh, that wouldn't take much time to uh, charge. We also have individual seats. We have flexible seating, so uh, the vehicle can be used to transport people during peak hours and it can be used to transport goods during non-peak hours. It also has flexible seating so that it can also accommodate wheelchair passengers. The vehicle also has a solar roof which would give an additional almost 30 kilometers per day uh, based on solar energy. Uh, the vehicle is uh, uh, the cheapest uh, that is going to be out there in the market, uh, the most affordable. We're looking at a price point of less than 15,000 which would translate to a rental of about uh, $10 per day. We're looking at uh, all the countries in the developing world. Uh, the market is very huge. Today, the market size is about 6.5 million vehicles for the ride hailing and the ride sharing segment, which is expected to grow to about 20 million to 30 million vehicles by 2030. Uh, by then, we hope to be able to produce about 350,000 vehicles per annum. Um, the segment that we are looking at it is not crowded today. Um, uh, today, it's mostly catered to by the unorganized sector. We're looking at building an ecosystem. So we're looking at uh, not just revenues from sale of vehicles, but also from the energy that is consumed. And we are looking at additional streams of revenue from advertising. Uh, our business model and our uh, manufacturing, there is a lot of innovation that we bring to the table, uh, right from virtual manufacturing, uh, right from a uh, you know, uh, modular design. Uh, we're looking at, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, not a large plant, but we're looking at franchise distributed micro factories. And uh, we are looking at increasing profitability for the vehicle dealerships, for the ride share operators, and for the owner drivers. We are putting together a team of, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, of experts from the automobile sector, as well as uh, from the tech sector. So uh, ours is going to be a very profitable business. Uh, we hope to reach a turnover of about 6.5 billion by 2030. And uh, they, we hope to be able to provide great returns for our investors. So welcome aboard. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Avram Schlax and I'm the CEO and founder of Blink Freight. Uh, just a little bit about myself quickly. I'm an American living and working in Asia for the last 15 years and in the industry for just about the same. Uh, shipping should be really simple. Uh, you export and uh, flawlessly it magically appears on the other side. 
Unfortunately, the devil is in the details. Um, this is just a high level overview of the basic touch points and of course a very simplified version. Uh, the freight forwarding industry is one of the last industries to digitize. Um, Blink Freight's USP is to take that booking process and reduce it from a, a minimum of four days uh, down to just a few clicks, reducing the amount of emails from about 31 emails back and forth down to about six. Uh, these are just one of the significant advances in automating repetitive processes that we have incorporated into our MVP, which is currently in a soft launch. Um, in turn, this will increase profitability um, with our, uh, to our customers by putting the savings right back into their bottom line, uh, achieving 20% minimum on overheads reductions on both uh, uh, importer and exporter sides, uh, especially I think which is really important with this COVID-19 times in uh, times of uncertainty. Uh, how do we do that, you ask? Well, via seamless booking engine on both sides of the ocean. We have custom developed a booking platform that speaks to both uh, US and Europeans uh, and a booking window for the Asian based shippers. It's fully integrated with each other and uh, some of the functionalities features we have is a WeChat integrated security logins uh, to real time exception reports all managed via APIs. Uh, this is just a brief overview of the TAM, SAM, SOM, these speak for themselves. Our, our SaaS and transactional revenue model, it's actually a two-pronged model. You have the subscription side and you have the transactional revenue per shipment. Uh, these are the, this is also the business side of the business roadmap. Um, we're, we're pretty much on target. We signed a $1.4 million deal. Uh, last month, we posted $85,000 in revenue. Uh, just a comparison with outpacing the Shanghai Freight Container Index based on percentage growth numbers, uh, the founding team, and the funding ask. Right now, we're, we're still in this funding round. We've already acquired 250K. All, everyone's on the same, same safe agreement terms. And uh, we will be closing it in about one to two weeks. Um, in all fairness, uh, the current investors invested six, eight months ago pre-product, pre-revenue. So this is an exceptional bargain. Be happy to deep dive dirt further for anyone that wants to know more about our product, our uh, product roadmap, our tech stack. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Rahul and I'm the CEO and co-founder of BotSaves. We have rebuilt autonomous mobile robots to automate and digitize material handling inside warehouses. A lot of warehouses, even today in Asia, still struggle to make the growing consumer demand. A large part of the human workforce is still wasting the time on mundane, no value adding activity from point to point. And considering the growing labor costs and shortage of, and shortage of such labor that these companies are starting to face today, these inefficient processes, especially in inbound operations, are proving to be quite expensive to companies. As a result, a lot of these warehouse operators, as well as factory operators, are looking towards AGB technology in terms of an automation solution. But these products require a significant investment of time as well as facilities in order for them to be commissioned. In some cases, taking about as six months to one year or even an entire new facility for them to be deployed. And once deployed, they're only able to serve one particular process and which if changes makes the entire investment pointless. Plus the fact that these robots require completely isolated working environments where they cannot collaborate with human operators or other machines makes it an even more significant investment for companies in countries like Singapore. What we are trying to do in BotSing is to build a solution that is flexible and work and work in any new environment with minimal to no changes to existing infrastructure. Thus, we offer to customize the products in terms of software and hardware to make the entire process of adoption a lot more seamless. And finally, what we believe in is an environment where humans and machines can work together in tandem safety. And we design all our systems to abide by this principle. Today, we move our products or payloads worth 300 kgs in two specific formats, either in the form of lifting units or in the form of conveying units. The market for this industry is immense and ever growing. Today, we are in a mobile robotics sector, but our vision is to become an end to end solution enabler, providing automation solutions for the entire material handling process, which is a much larger industry. To date, we have completed three projects, we have three upcoming projects in the next few months, 
and we have one ongoing pilot to automate in time operation at Schneider Electric. So far, we have tested the 10 sites, and each of these sites, what we aim to do is to provide cost savings in the factor of 30 to 40% for our customers. The major focus industries that we're going after at the moment are third party logistics centers and distribution centers. The team behind the company involves four founders. I, Rahul, handle investments and deployment engineering. Nikhil handles sales, software development. Prashant handles sales. And Singha handles ops and product development. Apart from the four of us, we have an amazing team of nine engineers across two offices in both Singapore and Bangalore. And we're growing every week. Our advisory panel includes people like Liu Siwai, who's the CTO of Rockwell Industries and who has over 20 years of experience building engineering projects. Mahesh, the program director at Ecolab Center of Innovation and Cross Innovation, who's an expert in the field of intelligent automation control. Plus, we're always happy and excited to have an amazing network of partners, including Wong Kong Industries, Enterprise Singapore, and Angel Hub in the field. This is Botsing, and we build intelligent auto automation solutions. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Nicholas, the CEO of F Drones. Over the past few years, consumer drones have proliferated and are now making their way into sending small parcels to people. Delivery drones, however, today are just limited to sending a few kilograms over a few kilometers. We at F Drones think bigger. We see potential for unmanned aircrafts to transform the world of industrial logistics. Every year, Supply boats and helicopters make more than 2.5 million trips to send supplies to ships and offshore platforms. These deliveries are expensive, they are slow, and they produce more than 100 million tons of CO2 every year. That's the amount of CO2 that Indonesia as a whole country produces. A typical delivery to a ship 20 kilometers away will take more than two hours, cost more than $2,000, and emit 100 kilograms of CO2. Drones have the potential to disrupt this, but are not yet good enough. Offshore platforms can be more than 50 kilometers away, while landing a drone on a ship that's rocking at sea is no small feat. Today, Air Drones brings the future of maritime delivery drones. Drones that can send 100 kilogram loads over 100 kilometers and help save 80% of the cost, time, and manpower. The delivery I mentioned earlier can be reduced to just 15 minutes, be 80% cheaper, and produce zero emissions. Our proprietary aircraft will take off vertically like a helicopter, rotate itself to fly like a plane with its wings, and land vertically with high accuracies using computer vision. This is not something that you need to wait another five years for. We plan to complete the development of our product by the middle of next year. To date, we have done advanced computer simulations. We have built and flown multiple scaled down prototypes, including autonomous flights. And right now, we have completed the first drone that is capable of delivering five kilos over 50 kilometers called the Hyper Launch. You're welcome to see this drone in our office at NUS. We are also glad to have the support of the port authorities and the aviation authorities in Singapore. In fact, we are the only company in Singapore now to have permit to do drone deliveries to these whole areas south of Marina Bay. In December last year, we have commenced test deliveries using an off-the-shelf drone to vessels owned by Eastern Pacific Shipping and Shooter Group. Eastern Pacific Shipping is also our first paying customer. Marina Northshore is just the beginning. We are also in advanced negotiations with one of the world's largest mining companies on using our drones to help them send spare parts between their remote mines and warehouses in Australia. These are some of the other sectors that we can potentially serve with our solutions. With this in mind, we are confident of becoming a company with revenues of more than $200 million. And this is why we have moved fairly quickly in our fundraising. We are now just about $440,000 short from closing our seed round of $1.5 million. F drones, 100 kilograms over 100 kilometers, will transform the world of industrial logistics. Come talk to us before we take off. Thank you.
Hello, welcome to an overview of Fleetbase. We've discovered through research and speaking to industry players, companies are using legacy systems and processes to carry out their operations. The need for innovation is there, however, companies are stifled due to high cost and long build out times for system development. Companies and developers still don't have the tools they need for an easier and cheaper development process. With this in mind, we've created the first developer ecosystem for logistics supply chain and shipping sectors. We provide a framework and tools developers need to expedite their development process. This prevents them having to waste time to rebuild key functions for logistics operation systems. Successful examples are companies such as Twilio, Facebook and Stripe. They provide developer ecosystems, which has cut down development time and cost and allowed companies to quickly and effectively innovate. Logistics and supply chain industries we feel should be no different. Our solution stack is as follows, a centralized console for develop, development and operations management, an API and framework, mobile apps for field operations and software development kits for custom build outs. We also provide data analytics and machine learning functions for users to have an oversight and a more in-depth analysis into their data. We have three rev revenue streams. The first is fleet ops, which we charge on a dispatch tier basis. Second is our marketplace. We charge a small facilitation fee for third party companies to integrate their solutions into Fleetbase. Finally, we generate re revenue from our contract work and joint ventures, such as Linkhorn and Fixflow. The logistics, supply chain and shipping sectors are the backbone of the global economy. Even in the face of global crisis, goods and supplies still need to move. Fleetbase targets companies and developers across the supply chain. We believe the industry globally is ready and needs a developer ecosystem in order to foster new and innovative solutions. Fleetbase provides the tools to support this. There are a number of companies which provide tech solutions in different parts of the supply chain. Fleetbase differs here as we provide the tools for companies to build out exactly what they require. Our web services are dynamic and modular. We even look to partner with other technology companies uh, for integrations and collaborations. Fleetbase entered into a joint venture with Link Effect in July 2018. The aim was to work together to develop a cloud-based platform aimed at hauliers in Malaysia to help them find more business and manage their excess container operations. Link Hall is powered using Fleetbase API and was launched by the Minister of Transport in Malaysia at the beginning of last year. We first registered Fleetbase back in May 2018. Since then, we've launched Link Hall and Fixflow a uh, fixture data extraction and reporting module for ship brokers, and also Fleetbase Core. We've recently secured projects in the bulk shipping space, and we'll be looking to launch those platforms by the end of this year. So far, we've generated more than 600,000 SING dollars in revenue, and are on target to increase that by the end of this year. Fleetbase is looking to raise 500,000 SING dollars in our first funding round to date. We'll be using the funds to expand the team to manage the current and future workloads and develop our core and new products. We'd also look to expand our sales staff. Our founding team consists of traditional business owners, executives, and technologists. Our founders originate from Singapore, United Kingdom, and America. Bringing together a diverse set of backgrounds, cultures, and skills, we're looking to push the logistics industry into the forefront of technology. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Gaurav. I'm a co-founder at Hopstack. Hopstack is a connected worker and asset intelligence platform. We were part of Plug and Play, Founders Camp, and winners at Elevate 2019. Labor comprises of the primary costs at operation-heavy uh, operation sites such as warehouses. Unsafe and inefficient operations at US warehouses cost them greater than $5 billion per year. Unanswered questions of operations and safety managers at warehouses revolve around worker and asset location, their movement patterns, and the utilization. US worker and safety connected market is expected to grow uh, at a CAGR of 14% to $8.5 billion by 2023. US enterprises and warehouses spend greater than $100 billion per year on worker safety comp and injury comp. Our solution, which is a cloud-based platform, provides real-time data streams on worker and asset location, movement patterns, zone violation alerts, including workplace injury notifications. 
Our analytics dashboard provides KPIs such as safety index, utilization index, and route optimization. This is done through our proprietary hardware and indoor and outdoor uh, software algorithms. Till date, we have done two paid pilots and are engaged in advanced commercial discussions with three large enterprises. We have enabled and accelerated our go-to-market with vendor and channel partnerships. Our revenue structure is based on a monthly SaaS subscription and managed services. In 2020, we project a revenue of $0.5 million from eight paying enterprise customers, and by 2021, at $1.5 million by 20 uh, enterprise customers. The executive team is comprised of PhDs, MBAs, and IITNs. The founding team between Vivek and myself has 20 plus years of enterprise software and hardware uh, product deploy deployment at Fortune 500 com companies across three continents. Till date, we have generated 80K in uh, USD in funding and are looking to raise $1 million in convertible notes at 20% discount. This will accelerate our customer acquisition strategies and enable some of the critical hires required for us to succeed. Look forward to longer and more detailed discussions with you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nissan from Make My Day, a startup from Tel Aviv, Israel, that helps electric vehicle drivers and electric vehicle fleet to plan the day, including the charging. We are talking about a market that is the most growing market in the automotive industry today. When the numbers are saying that in seven to eight years, 30% of the sales of vehicles will be electric. But today, there are still problems, mostly regarding the charging. When and where to charge the vehicle, what to do while you're charging the vehicle, as it can take you one hour to charge the EV. So Make My Day solution is actually to understand what is the driver needs and the agenda for the whole day. We are connected to the driver calendar. We know everything you need to do during the whole day. Then we are connecting to the battery status of the vehicle in real time. And we have the data of all the charging stations around the driver in this local area. And we combine all of that in order to give him the optimal route for the whole day, including the charging. We are doing all this magic by using a very unique algorithm to be developed especially for that. If we're talking about fleets today, there are programs that commit, many companies commit to change and shift their feet from gasoline to EV in order to reduce the CO2 and the air population and make my day actually help them to make this first, make the shifting from gasoline to EV. And then when you have the EV fleets, how to manage it with our unique algorithm so how do we make money? What is the business model? We are working as a B2B business model with big corporates from the energy and from the fleets area. We have today five running projects all around the world with names like NLX, the biggest energy company in Europe that operates thousands of charging stations around Europe and make my day actually integrate into, into the an LX application and help the end user how to make the charging optimization. We're working with OEMs like Volkswagen as we won the first place competition they did in Tel Aviv. We have a project with Centrica. Centrica is the energy company from the UK with the second biggest fleet in the UK of 15K vehicles and make my day help them how to, make, how to manage it both for the drivers and for the fleet management. We have projects in Germany. We're working with Lafarge also with 10,000 drivers they have around the world. So we have really great traction and revenues for this year and for the next years. We have, I we think, a huge advantage against competitors as we have a unique technology and a unique point of view that give a full solution 
both for the fleets and for the driver. We are two founders bringing to the table many years of both in, comp in, in, in business and with technology, and we have a team of five people in data and R&D. So if I need to say it in one sentence, we have a working product. We have projects and big customers of corporates. We have new customers waiting to work with us. So in this stage, we need funding in order to succeed with the current customers and projects and with our new customers around the world. So we will hope you will join us in this opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm Orlando, co-founder and CEO of Sensfinity. And at Sensfinity, we are creating the internet of cargo. More than $1 trillion are lost every year in supply chains. More than 1.3 billion tons of food yearly spoils because of the lack of visibility in the global supply chains, according to MERS. Now, this is very visible today with the current disruptions due to coronavirus. And uh, the main issue is that the complexity of the processes paired with the, all the handovers leads to uh, a non a non-digital version of how the world in supply chain is uh, today happening. This is what we as Sensfinity are currently changing with our customers. We are working with the biggest crate manufacturer in the world. We are working with Palette users and with the big tr uh, biggest truck manufacturer in the world to digitalize these cargo assets. Now, as of today, we have already saved around 400 tons of food together with our customers, which serve supermarkets. Our, our sensor-based solution is uh, uh, a sensor which comes off the box with uh, notifications, humidity, temperature, pressure, shock, and alerts. All this data is sent to a cloud platform with analytics. And now, since uh, very recently, also with machine learning algorithms to improve the, the visibility and also the, the prevention of alarms. So it's really the entire pipe, hardware, secure network, as well as analytics and uh, machine learning. We have customers all over, all over the world in the supply chain and logistics area, and uh, we have even more to come. Since the, the last past weeks, we even have customers coming from Australia and other regions where we are currently not present because of this need to control what's happening in disruption. So the overall goal is to establish the internet of cargo as the real solution for controlling end to end the supply chain in the future. And today is really the time because global disruption is uh, uh, calling for a need of digitalization of the entire supply chain so that customers are able to see what's happening with their goods and where are their goods and what's the status of their global distributed supply chains. Our go-to-market strategy is based on hardware as a service which uh, has uh, the sensor as well as the communications with the global reach and the cloud platform. Our team came mostly from uh, Nokia, and to that know-how in electronics and communications, we had a Rolf Glöckler, which uh, uh, has, uh, has been a CEO of uh, Löwenbräu, as well as Vice President of Danone, so he has a very large know-how of global integrated supply chains. We are currently raising a seed round of 1.8 million euros, of which uh, 1.5 million euros are already secured, so there is still a 300,000 euros uh, ticket open. So if you're interested in building the future of the um, global cargo and uh, uh, helping the world be more effective with the, with the um, supply that we have, please contact me. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Willit, I'm the founder of Piggy Bank. So together with my founding team, we aim to connect the businesses and the community all together to provide the community with an additional platform to earn passive income and to provide the businesses with affordable logistics. So we created the tagline, the community that moves your business on the way and by the way. So in the life of COVID-19 situation, instead of bringing the community to the business, we bring the businesses to the community. The concept of Piggy Bank was triggered during the time whereby I need my satisfaction of the pregnancy craving to be fulfilled at weird hours and also I saw a 
constantly need to hunt for extra pair of hands. So with my background experience in the public service sector, I kind of validate the need to create such opportunity and networks, especially for the lower income. So uh, from that, uh, we actually saw various problems for the community. If they are working on a shift basis, they are unable to fulfill certain purchase. For the businesses, they are, when the item is too small and of a smaller value, they are unable to own their own fleet size and the situational problem will be more towards the lack of unified platform. To fulfill various needs, you need to actually download various apps to be able to fulfill certain tasks. So with that, right, we, own, we aim to actually um, provide that particular well-established logistic network to create um, impactful business opportunities and partnership with alliances like federation and e-commerce business. And last but not least, to have an easy-to-use and computer infrastructure. So with that, to highlight various overview, we want to be very cost-effective and time management is there. And also at the same time, to build out your network, to be more social conscious around and surrounding in order to build that community directory and marketplace at the end of the day. So with that, right, we also saw a rising trend whereby people will want to have the receive now mentality and no longer were the days whereby people will wait for seven days to have their item to arrive. And also at the same time, people are more reliant on their mobile right now. So with that, right, people will actually compare us to the bigger players, like how are we different from Grab and Lala Move. For the other bigger players, they use a top-down approach whereby you need to own a vehicle to be able to do a job. But for piggyback, as long as you can walk, you're able to fulfill that job. So we did a sort analysis and it kind of validated the concept for piggyback to be able to scale and followed by our business model whereby we are not just looking at the B2C part and we are looking also at the B2B part whereby we help the corporates to actually fulfill certain kind of like logistic needs and requirement. So right now our financial focus will be more towards the major part will be more towards the development of the app to bring it from a proof of concept to a prototype. And also at the same time our as it plan will be more towards a merger and acquisition MA and we are currently at our seat pre-seed funding schedule. So right now, Piggyback is actually operating like a traditional business uh, model whereby we do it as a very traditional delivery um, company and we took uh, one year plus to actually validate this whole thing. Yeah, and for the founding team, we are a very uh, subject matter expert in various aspects such as community engagement, community outreach, training and development, and last but not least, logistics and transport. So with that, we believe this is the right team to actually scale Piggyback to bring it to a greater height. So in that case, we hope to actually hear from you guys soon.